Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And uh, today we've got a weird one for you, but it's going to help us illustrate a couple of things. Um, a surprisingly common uh, request for a video that we, we've kept getting is uh, what happens if Battleship New Jersey goes back to the Revolutionary War? And since I'm a huge fan of the Final Countdown, we're going to talk about what happens if, for some reason, a time tunnel opens up and New Jersey ends up back at the Revolutionary War. Nothing. It's bad. New, New Jersey is home ported in Long Beach, so she teleports back through and she's in the Pacific Ocean with no Panama Canal and no ability to refuel, so she never even makes it to what is the American colonies at that time. All right, all right, Let, let's say for whatever reason, instead of being teleported from the point where she is in time period but to the same point in the past, let's say that for whatever reason she, she goes back to um, the, a specific point in the American Revolution. Uh, Battleship New Jersey can operate for approximately 30 days without being resupplied. She has no ability to get new fuel. There's no more Bunker C or diesel uh, for her to pick up in Colonial America. They cannot make additional propellant for the 16-inch or 5-inch guns. Those fire with nitrocellulose cordite, which is like an extruded plastic-like compound not the same sort of black powder that you get by digging up the latrines and, and extracting the saltpeter. Uh, so if Battleship New Jersey travels back in time to any pre-industrial period, uh, she basically runs out of fuel in a very short period of time and uh, can no longer function. Assuming the ship is operating at her most economical cruising speed, she has enough fuel for about 30 days. Assuming she's running around at high speed trying to do something, I don't know, uh, it, she's got enough fuel for about six and a half days. So you don't have all that much time. Uh, probably the best thing you could possibly do is anchor the ship somewhere with a, fuel, a full gas tank and just leave one or two of the boilers lit off to make electrical power. Because guess what? In uh, 1770s, 1780s, there's nowhere for this thing to plug into shore power. So even if she's sitting in port as like a permanent shore battery protecting Philadelphia or whatever, um, she can't she has to make her own electrical power, which means burning fuel in the boilers to run the turbo generators to put enough power to the 16-inch guns to actually operate them. There is nothing in the modern world that Battleship New Jersey couldn't sink. So going back to the revolution, she is equally as dominant. The problem is the length of time that she can go unsupplied. It is not enough time for her to make a difference. It takes about six weeks for news to cross the Atlantic. So let's say uh, Washington is retreating from New York. Poof, New Jersey shows up, uh, bombards the, the British. Uh, the British surrender and Washington retains New York and whatnot. Um, by the time news has made it over to the British that there's this new threat here, New Jersey is no longer a threat. She's run out of fuel. Uh, so really, it doesn't alter anything. New Jersey is out commerce ratings. She, they decide that, all right, we're going to go and sink British ships. If you read about ships during the Revolution and the War of 1812 during that time period, uh, they carry enough food for about six months, enough water for about six months. They don't need to refuel because they're sail powered. And over that six month period, um, operating on the heavily traveled sea lanes, they will run into maybe a dozen ships. 
uh, reading about American privateers or continental or U.S. Navy warships in the Caribbean, which is a pretty small and densely packed uh, sea zone, you see ships like Constellation and Constitution during the Quasi War uh, capturing five or six French ships during a, a six month cruise. So even with New Jersey being three times as fast as any other ship out there, not having to rely on the wind and having radar, um, she will find a handful of British ships before she runs out of fuel. And anything she finds, it's gone, forget about it. Make ready, fire! Um, another thing to consider besides the fuel is the ammunition. This is an armor-piercing round. An armor-piercing round probably won't sink a wooden ship. It'll punch a 16-inch hole in one side, it'll punch a 16-inch hole in the other side, uh, but unless you're hitting it repeatedly, it's not going to go down. Uh, wooden ships are used to being hit by solid shot, and they keep wooden plugs, just like this ship carried, to plug those holes. If you hit it with a high capacity round that explodes on impact, boom, one hit, one kill. You've only got 130 rounds per gun, 1,200 rounds total. Uh, and whatever proportion of them are armor piercing are basically useless. You don't have reinforced bunkers to bombard. You don't have armored ships uh, to shoot at. So all it does is put a 16 inch hole in, in what it hits. Uh, so really not that great. Uh, also, you have to consider a wooden ship probably doesn't have the same radar signature as a ship like New Jersey. So, okay, she's got all these electronic sensors. Well, she can't pick up anyone else's ECM. She can't pick up anybody else's radio signals and use radio direction finders. It, it's purely surface search radar. And uh, how much of a return from a uh, wooden hauled ship are you going to get? I hear you. Splash the Yeagers. I repeat, splash the Yeagers. In the G.I. Joe episode, Sink the Montana, which I will cite as my source here, um, USS Constitution, manned by Shipwreck and the other G.I. Joes, is able to uh, sneak up on and board Montana and uh, allow her to be sunk because of the ship's lack of uh, radar signature. Now, certainly our radars could pick up other ships and we could run them down. But again, there are a finite number of ships that we're going to encounter in a month. Even if we sail the ship across the Atlantic, there's half your fuel, uh, and sail up the Thames waving an American flag that nobody knows what the heck it is, uh, and sink whatever ships are there, I don't think it's got a really big impact. Um, honestly, the, the thing that would make the biggest difference when this ship's crew goes ashore with the weapons from the Marine Armory, a full auto M16 or M60, or even if it's World War II and it's an M1 Garand, um, could, could really make a difference in a Revolutionary War battlefield. Uh, so really the best thing the ship could do is strip off most of its usable equipment in Philadelphia or wh wherever you want to leave it and have her crew take their stuff and join the Continental Army somewhere. But then you better hope that they're up to date on their smallpox vaccines or else camp life is not going to be good to them. An Iowa-class battleship is a tremendous asset when it works as part of a whole national strategy deploying the ship overseas with other ships and other resources to refuel it, resupply it, protected from enemy submarines. Not a threat. I don't think Turtle's going to be able to drill through the bottom of this ship. Uh, to operate alongside the ship to help uh, project national policy. And without those dry dock facilities, refueling facilities, ammunition manufacturing facilities, um, this ship 
is nowhere near as effective as a lone asset. Now, if this ship is part of a battle group that includes resupply ships and repair ships and uh, other things like that, and uh, they're able to do some manufacturing on board or even set up some manufacturing ashore with the pre-industrial stuff that was available at the time, Maybe we can convert the boilers to burn coal. I take it back old school. I... What do you think? How much of an impact could a modern ship like this actually have going back in time like that? I don't actually think a ship like New Jersey, uh, a single ship unable to resupply, could actually have that much of an impact on the war. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can support the channel and the museum. Thanks for watching. This must be some type of experiment. Some type of Philadelphia experiment. <laughs>